Today we're going to make some black and white cards, which is something that stretches me a little bit because sometimes it's hard to work with just a couple of colors and still make it look exciting. So I have some of these beautiful flowery background stamps that I think are going to help us quite a bit. And then we're going to make some frames with those and have some fun with different types of frames. Thanks for joining me today on my gentastic journey, including card crafting. Okay, so I put that one aside after we stamped it and you can see it there to the right and I decided to start working on a second card and this one I'd like to use this gigantic butterfly cutout and I'm going to choose a black card base to go with it and this is one where I'd like to use the entire card base and cut the butterfly out of it and I'm going to try and leave a little bit of room at the bottom so I can include a sentiment. And I use some Scotch low tack tape, it's just removable tape, and I use that to keep my dies attached to the paper when I am die cutting them, and it works fantastic for me. I've never had a problem. There are plenty of other types of tape, but this one just works really well for me. It's never stuck too hard to a piece of paper. So here we have our beautiful butterfly cut out, and I'm going to pop all these little cute pieces out of the butterfly because I don't actually need all of them but I haven't decided if I want to include the butterfly in with this card or if I want to just use the cutout of the butterfly. So now I'm going to use some background stamps that are cute. Some of them have butterflies, mushrooms, all different colors and I just want to put some color or I shouldn't say color black <laughs> black onto this white piece of base cardstock and that will just give us a little bit of interest behind the butterfly so the beauty of having a cutout is that you can have something interesting behind it and these are super interesting and so this butterfly will act kind of as a frame for these pretty stamps and they're really hard to tell which ones which ones went with which so I'm trying to look at them and see which ones I want to use so I just use that sitting there so I would know I'd have enough coverage. I use my stamp positioner because it just makes sure that I have a good image even if the first time I stamp it it doesn't. I can stamp it over and over again and that's my primary reason for using a stamp positioner because I am not very good with stamps. I seem to either push too hard and get ink everywhere or I don't push hard enough and then I don't get enough ink so I almost always use my stamp positioner. It just gives me a little bit more confidence in card making and I've been doing this for a long time and when the stamp positioner came out, it was a good day for me. <laughs> Those of you that are like me, leave me a comment. Just stamping, if, and if you screw up your stamping, then especially too far into your project, it can really cause problems. So you can see here, there's just a couple parts where I didn't get the stamp work. So I took one of the stamps off because I think it was just preventing the second stamp from getting contact. And there we go. And that will look really pretty. I have a sticky mat on my stamp positioner, and it's a little too sticky, so it keeps curling my paper but it uncurls pretty quickly too. So I'm just going to cut some of this paper off so that when I glue it to the back of the card base it'll look nice. You won't be able to tell that that's what's peeking through. Isn't that pretty when you can see it through? Lots of different things and I could have used one big stamp. I just thought this was pretty with the different types and you really could do anything you want. So pick out a stamp, any sort of background stamp, any stamp that has flowers on it. My cards are intended to be fairly simple and stuff that you can do with the stuff you have so you don't feel like you need to buy what I have. I do list in the description box below all the stuff that I can find that I used if it's stuff that's still out there and right now I'm using my Ranger Multimedium Matte Finish Glue and that is nice because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room so when I put this on there I can make sure it's exactly where I want it and that has a nice finish on the inside of the card as well. Now I've decided I want to cut out a few more butterflies and I thought I might want to put them around the card and these butterflies are nice because they have multiple leaves cut out so you'll see that it looks very 3D when you when you use these butterflies and I thought that would be a nice addition to the card to give it a little more definition and they're not too many pieces so you're just mostly pushing out the butterfly there's not extra pieces or anything like that so they're really pretty but see when you separate them they've got lots of different petals they're super pretty I really like these butterflies and I thought those would look pretty but it might get a little busy so I'm deciding if I want to use these or do something different. Uh, so those of you that haven't watched my channel before, I try not to plan my cards in advance too, too much because I think 
part of learning about cards and creating cards is seeing the thought process behind it. A lot of people say, you know, I don't know what to do with this stamp set or I don't know what to do with these dies. And so this just kind of shows you a little bit of my thought process. So now I'm going to work on getting a sentiment. And I got a couple that I have in mind, so I'm just going to cut them both out. Because if I don't use them, I'll just stick them in the bag that I use for my dies. I stick them in the back of it. I use plastic, thick plastic bags, and I put magnetic backs on them. And it helps me to keep the dies on there. And then in the very back of the envelope, I keep extras. So if I don't use one of these sentiments, then I can always keep it in the back and I'll use it for another project. So this has like a little bit of a shadow behind it so you can keep all those little pieces and use that for the shadow piece but I am primarily interested in the sentiment itself which you'll see here in a second once I can get it out. It's fairly thin so I'm a little bit concerned that I might rip it but I think I'm able to get this one out. And look at how pretty that script is. I love the sentiment. And then this next one I thought would be interesting because it's got kind of a thick base and then just the letters at the top and I thought this might be pretty on a black and white card as well so we'll see which one I decide to use. Decide where I want to put these butterflies and this is where I decide this might take a different route than I expected so here I'm going hmm so I did the sentiment in black and maybe should have done it in white and then these butterflies are feeling a little bit too big so then I thought maybe I'd put one in the middle of the butterfly that we already have, but I'm not sure I'm going to like that either. And this is, again, why I create these without putting too much thought. I usually have a base idea, like black and white cards. <laughs> and then we just kind of go through the process and see what we might change. And this is one of the bigger butterflies, and I kind of liked that. But then I went back to the original butterfly that came out of the die set. And I don't really like it in black. I think it takes up too much of that pretty stamp behind it. Here's where this takes a different route, and that's okay. You can always change gears. And so I'm going to cut this card base and make it a card front, <laughs> which is totally fine. And then just cut it down a little bit so that it'll give me a little bit of border. And I'm going to put this onto a white card, white card base, I should say. And then this allows me to have a little border with that white card base. And I changed my mind. I have a couple different color white card bases and this one matches that insert a little bit better. It's a little bit less bright white. I've got some Nina white paper and then I've got some other ones that I cut out from pr some previous paper. I don't even know the brand. So I like how that's going to look. And then here I go with a with the different sentiments that I'm not sure I'm going to like. And then I've decided I want to see what they're going to look like if I put them in white, which makes sense on a on a black card front to have them in white. So I'm gonna cut out a white butterfly and a couple of those sentiments in white that I've already cut out. And I'll either use them to make them a little offset so they look like a shadow, or I'll use them just as white sentiments. And I wanted to see what this white butterfly would look like. It's the same one as I cut out that butterfly and I thought, hmm, I wonder what that's going to look like if I put that on there. And I like that a little bit better. You can't really see the stamps as well behind it, but I still think I like the way that looks popped out. And I'm using this really, really thin foam tape that I have on that huge roll. And I'm just going to pop it up in the center there. It's a pretty thick cardstock, so I think it'll be okay to have just the center popped up and glued down. And there we go. I think that's going to look pretty. And then you can still see the stamps behind it a little bit. I just like it better than when I put the black butterfly on there. And then I'm going to pop this, this white sentiment up on some foam tape as well and give it a little more dimension and you'll be able to see the black behind it where the birthday is cut out. I think that'll be a good look. Sometimes if you just pop some stuff up on foam tape, it just gives it enough dimension. And it's so expensive to send cards now no matter how much dimension it feels like they have. My post office is constantly telling me everything is non-machinable. <laughs> now I get to the point where I'm like, I don't care how much dimension I'm going to put on it because it's going to have to be non-machinable anyway. So if I'm going to pay for the extra postage, I might as well put as much bling <laughs> and dimension as I want on it. So I'm having a little trouble with these, but I put a little glue there. Just I don't always trust those little gem embellishments to stay put. So let me try one of these big ones and put it on to the sentiment because there's so much white space on that sentiment. I don't always love those big ones, but I thought that might be kind of interesting. Use a couple of the different sizes and 
just to give it a little bit more interest. And then I'm going to use some of these little white pearls. Since the paper is not quite bright white, I decided to use some of these white pearls and I'm just going to stick them throughout the card as well and so that we really focus on that black and white. And you can see a bunch of the glue is kind of squishing out. This is the Barely Art Precision and Craft Glue and it does give a nice little precision tip so it's it does give just a little bit of glue but these are such little pearls that you can see that the glue seeps out a little bit but you know what it's not going to matter because this glue dries matte as well and you won't even be able to tell. So now I'm going to pop this onto a white card base the one that I chose earlier and it has just enough of a border that it ties all that white in. I'm going to wipe off some of that excess glue and I like the way that turned out and I'll show you them all at the end. I'll pull them both back in. So this one is the one I started at the beginning where I did the cutout and I did that large stamp on the front and now I'm going to just die cut out a couple of a flower and a center of a flower and again I'm trying to keep everything black and white because that was my thought when I came up with this video idea and this die set is nice because it's got a little bit of cut out as you can see inside of that flower and at first I was going to pop it on top of one of the other flowers but I'm going to change my mind because those flowers are so gorgeous on that stamp that I changed my mind and I decided that I die cut out the same flower in black and I'm going to actually move it a little bit. I decide not to cover up one of those beautiful flowers that are stamped there. So I'm just using a little bit more of my Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue and again I use this glue when I don't need the precision as much and it gives me a little bit more wiggle. It doesn't dry quite as fast as the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue does but it also doesn't have as nice of a precision tip. You can always buy those bottles though and get a precision tip so don't ever think that you know the glue has to be in the container you get it in. So here I went outside of my black and white and I put a little red brad in there just to give it a pop of color and I decided I'm going to pop that up in the corner there and that way I'm going to get to see those beautiful flowers. I have a kind of a third flower that is popped out and gives us a little bit of dimension so I like the way that looks but now it comes back to that sentiment again so I've got this black one which looks really good when it's on the black and then I've got the white one where I lost the Y on the white one and so I was like how can I make this work because the white looks really good against the black and the black looks really good against the white I'm just going to cut the happy off of this second one and then I will glue it all down and I'll have it half black and half white and there we go problem solved and I really like the font on this anyway so I'm glad I was able to make this work what I don't realize is that I forgot about the Y on here so that's going to be a little bit of a problem and again a little heavy on the glue there but it's hard when you've got these little teeny tiny sentiments so I throw that Y on there and you could see it's hanging over just a little bit but I'm trying to squish it up a little bit too and we'll make it work and then we'll glue up the first part and actually I'm gluing the wrong one and I don't realize it <laughs> so I bring over the happy and I'll put the other one to the side and wipe the glue off of it I show you the good and the bad of card making right <laughs> I make mistakes all the time so no need to pretend I'm perfect at this. And so I like the way that looked with the happy in black and the birthday in white. I was going to cover that brad but I don't think it looks terrible. If I want to I can put something over it when I'm making more of the inside of the card. Now I will typically stamp that if I'm going to put a stamp on the inside of the card like a, a saying or something like that. I will do that before but here you can see I'm just putting that inside in. Whenever I use a dark card base I usually put a white insert. And so here are the two cards so far. I do think I want to do a little bit more on these but you'll see that it's close. So I decided to take that black butterfly and I glue that into the inside just to give that a little bit of fun. In this card there's a lot of that black border and that card front got a little hurt when I die cut out the inside. I'm going to put these little dashes all the way around and then you won't be able to see where uh, the die cutting machine sort of crushed that one side. And these don't have to be perfect. This is just like a little border piece and when you make dashes like this or you make squiggly lines around as a border they're not intended to be perfect in any sense of the word. And I'm just using a white gel pen here and I will include that in the description box below. They're super inexpensive. I believe I got them from Amazon and I will include those in so you can see that if you need a inexpensive of white gel pen and then I add just a couple dots around the black of the flower for a little more interest and then I think I like the, these now so here is my butterfly and then here's a little bit of a frame with some flowers and I like the way those two came out so out of the box with some black and white cards how fun thanks for joining me today I appreciate you being with me and if you liked this content please hit the like button the thumbs up and also 
If you would please subscribe to the channel, I do put out two videos per week. And then if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when those videos come out. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for joining today.